here's a piece of deer antler we're gonna make a ring from it and if you look real close a lot of people don't know this but the center of deer antler many times depending on what they eat and whether or not they've been wounded etc etc it's porous it's got holes in it so if you're gonna make a ring out of it you have to get rid of that and the antler kind of dictates what size ring you're gonna get we're gonna take a slice out of this and we're gonna make a ring out of it one way you can drill this it makes it difficult with these holes you can fill it with super glue and baking soda but every time it tries to smoke on you a little bit you gotta smother it with more baking soda you don't want to smell that stuff and you want to do it outside we're gonna to try to do it without that and as soon as I get the hole in it I'll be back to you because this is a tough little process be right back one more thing this one here's not as porous but it's not the size that I want either I'm shooting for a size 8-ish, but I don't know what we'll get. Um, if you want to avoid that porous, you can take a chance, and it is a chance. Not this part of the antler towards the base, but the farther towards the tips you get is usually less porous. So I'll drill a hole through the side and take a thin slice out of it, but I think this one might be a little too thin right there. So I might not be able to get what I want. But we're going to do something here. Stick with me. Alright, we've taken a fortuner bit. Fought it a little bit. Sorry about the lights. One of mine went out. You always want to use a drill bit smaller than your ring size. See that? My pinky barely fits in that. I generally start with 5 8 And what you're left with is this rim. Now, you've got the thickness of your ring. And whatever, you know is left on the inside to turn out the size of your ring you're at the mercy of the shape of this antler sometimes it takes more than one try we'll be right back there we go five-eighths hole probably a little over a half inch thick let's go to the lathe all right what we have here is a cullet chuck with a 5 8 steel mandrel that I had made and it's drilled out to fit the taper of my 60 degree tailstock uh, whatever you call that thing <laughs> You can use dowel rods. I keep various size dowel rods. I can hold that in my collet chuck and, and this I think this one's seven eighths, this one's three quarters. I keep tapered ones around. You can use a pen mandrel. There's all kinds of ways to do this. You can just turn it out of wood if you don't have the stuff. But uh, let's get busy. spot right there you can see the color change got another one right there we're gonna just barely get rid of that and we've straightened the sides up as far as we can without hitting the metal this is gonna be narrower than this when we get done and we don't have to get rid of those spots but we're gonna do something special stick with me This stuff's called art sand. 
and your tools will not cut it we're going to put a little bit in there all the way around and we're going to put some super glue in it we'll have to do this probably twice to fill in all the gaps Try to keep the super glue off the surface of the antler, just in the groove, otherwise your sand will stick to it. And it's a lot of work to get it back out of there because your tools will not cut sand. You got more time than you think. A lot of super glue takes a while to dry. Until your dust hits it. And that's what she looks like. When you put your super glue in. You got to keep your uh, inlay material very, very close by because it'll start to smoke. If you get a certain mixture of air and uh, dust, I've used sawdust for inlays, I've used baking soda for inlays, I've used copper for inlays, but sand and stone, you can't use your tools to cut it. Sandpaper or a grinding wheel is the only way to get it off of there. But you pile the super glue or the uh, yeah, the inlay material on there and you tap it. Now wear gloves if you got sensitive fingers because you're going to wind up with a little bit of it on your finger. But really pile too much on there and tap it and tap it and tap it. Put that smoke out as soon as possible because it will burn the material and change the color of it. So you got to hurry. Especially something light colored like baking soda. We'll be back to you when we're sanding. Everybody usually has, if you own a Dremel tool, one of these little things, it's got a stone on it, nobody hardly ever uses it. If you've got an angle grinder, uh, save your, you know, when your stone gets too small for your angle grinder and you throw it away, save it. This is a good thing to use it for. It saves you a lot of sandpaper. One thing about sand and an inlay is if you're using super glue, super glue does not like heat. So if you slow the speed down, just let the sandpaper do its job, keep it moving, you'll be okay. If you hold pressure on that, you should never use pressure with sandpaper, but if you hold pressure on that, it'll get hot and you'll get a burn. A burn will change the color of your inlay. And you're going to get some of that most of the time anyway. Right there's just a little bit of one. It adds character to a point, but you want to avoid it or it'll, it'll like, uh, it can turn yellow. Sometimes it can turn black, stuff like that. But we've got a ways to go here, and then we're going to go to the inside. Stick with me. All right, take a toothbrush. You're going to get some finer dust down in there, and it's white, and that's fine. looks pretty cool when it gets finished, but I'm going to knock out as much of it as I can. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Now, for a finish, turn the speed down. I'm folding up a paper towel. You don't want this on your finger. This is going to get hot quick. You put generous amount of super glue and just go like that then quickly fold your paper towel and pinch it so it doesn't smoke and you're not breathing those fumes or it will smoke and it gets hot 
when we turn off the lathe we have sanded it to 600 and I know there's streaks in it right now that's the finish we just put on it what we do see that's dry already so what we do is we take a clean spot on our paper towel not the glued part <laughs> we speed it up add some buffing compound again avoiding heat now we'll buff off the buffing compound and I'll do that two or three times and we'll have a finished outside of our ring stick with me there's the outside we're gonna buff it again when we get done one time but as you can see there's all kinds of character in that antler still different colors and almost looks like cracks if you get a crack you can super glue it that finish is pretty tough that's all that shine is right there super glue but now we got to finish the inside <laughs> okay this is hard for me to figure out how to film but i knocked that this is a friction fit so i knocked that ring off to where it's just hanging over the edge a little bit and i have to well first i gotta I have to take this tool, stick it in there at about the ring size that I want and cut a little bit of a lip so I can turn this thing around and put it on a different mandrel to finish the inside. And it's tricky because we cut the inlay and we sanded it now we don't know exactly where the bottom of that inlay is at and if I hit it with that piece of steel I'm going to ruin the tip of it <laughs> so we got to be a little careful also the color of your compound this is white this is red if I was to use that red compound in here any imperfection would get filled with that color so you want to keep your color kind of corresponding with whatever you're making be right with you now we have flipped it over on the mandrel to clean up that edge and then we can make the mandrel that we're going to finish the inside of the ring on just use a wrench like I just did you gotta sharpen it <laughs> old yard sale wrenches and stuff like that and we're gonna put this on here like this well for starters it'd be like this and we're gonna try to cut up in there as far as we can and then it's okay because we're hitting wood stick with me got her on there nice and snug could go flying across the room let's find out made a lot of these but right in there where is it I marked it because I can't read it 
Right in there is about a size 8. That's what we figured it would be. Uh, I think that's size 8. <laughs> now here's the problem. There's a three quarter wrench. And that's too big. We need to be able to turn this around again so we can do the other side. So now I have to turn another ledge so I can flip it over and it friction fits again. Be right back. Okay, now we got our ring. That's the unfinished side. That's the almost finished side. What typically happens is you wind up with a bump in the middle if you're not careful, which you can get with a Dremel tool or whatever. But This took me a couple tries. <laughs> not being a standard size, and you don't want it to be so tight that when you put it on there that it's going to break because we're to that point now but now we can turn it get rid of this uneven part smooth out the inside to the same diameter as the other side and then we'll finish her up with a dremel done but the porosity that we saw in the beginning of this video that can be in the center of the antler a little tiny bit of it could still be in there so before we work on it I'm gonna coat the whole inside in super glue and then I'm going to take it back out with the Dremel and do a little work on it, put my maker's mark, and then we'll show you the finished product 